Hello, Melinda Green here, and this is a follow-up to my puzzle introduction video. Now, people often ask, what is the legal move set for this puzzle? And there's a spectrum of moves, from the obviously fine to the obviously not. There is, however, general consensus within the 4D puzzling community as to which moves should be considered canonical and which should not. And this is especially useful for speed solving and other competitions. So in order to say that you can solve this puzzle, you should be able to do it using only the following six moves. First are the simple rotations. Second, 180 degree twists of the outer faces. Third, 180 degree twists of one of the side faces. Number four, axial twists of the central face. So these are actually twisting the central face, in this case, the orange face. Now people often ask, well, what about just turning a single end cap? Well, that turns out to be completely illegal, but if you turn both end caps together, that's perfectly fine. That's just one of these axial twists. Number five, the arbitrary half puzzle juxtapositions. So take the puzzle apart into two halves, turn it around any way you like, and stick them back together. Number six, the whole puzzle reorientations, or what I'm also calling uh, gyro moves. So the other rotations are swapping axes of the puzzle, but always leaving the, the outer axis, in this case, the green-blue axis, unchanged. So to swap that for any other axis, we need a fancier kind of rotation. And so anything that you can do that achieves that without changing the state of the puzzle is fine. So like, let's say we want the pink-purple axis to be on the outside where green-blue is. This is the way I do it, and there are other ways as well. So still solved, but purple pink on the outside. And that's it. The six canonical moves for, for the two by two by two by two. Now, of course, there are other moves that you can do uh, that, that are perfectly allowable in a casual solution. Uh, some of them are simple combinations of the previous six, and others are, are more unusual looking moves that typically wouldn't be allowable alone, but if they result in a legal position, then technically you could use them. So for example, the clamshell move, this looks really strange, but it's really just a shorthand for these three 180 degree canonical twists. Also interesting are the restacking moves, so used in the in the gyro move or the re, the whole puzzle reorientation. These restacking moves turn out to be illegal. This restacking in the short direction to me looks like the four dimensional rotations in the virtual puzzle, but you can also restack in the long direction, and this completely changes the state of the puzzle. These moves do result in legal positions of the puzzle, but they make such a large jump in the state space that it's really questionable as to whether you should be able to use them in a solution. But they turn out to be very handy for, for scrambling. So go ahead and use them in your, in your scrambles. Whether or not you want to use it in your solutions is up to you. And they're also interesting because any odd number of these leaves the puzzle in this really weird looking sort of uh, parallel universe. Notice the we don't have the, the two diamonds on the sides. Uh, there's no central piece, but there's actually uh, two central pieces now. The uh, And any two of these will put you back in sort of the normal looking state. So So that's the very bizarre restacking move.
it's relatively unexplored. And getting more outrageous now, it turns out that you can actually make a 180 degree flip of any piece right in place. Isn't that strange? Because you can't do anything to a single piece in the original Rubik's Cube, but it turns out that in four dimensions, this is actually perfectly legal. So you can do that in any of these 180 degree directions. So it turns out that this, this state now should be solvable using only the canonical moves. I don't know how to do that. I think it's uh, quite, a, quite a long sequence, but it's entirely possible. Of course, it seems kind of outrageous to, to use this in a solution to just take the piece out and stick it back together but it is technically legal. And then the most outrageous of all would be to just take the puzzle entirely apart and reassemble it, because if you start it off in some legal state, then you could prove that it's solvable to reassemble it, but nobody would consider that to be an actual solution to the puzzle. So there you have it, the canonical moves for my two by two by two by two. Thank you.